Okay, believe it or not, this is one of the most highly requested topics I've ever had on the channel, period. I've gotten 20 at least, more like 30 maybe, or so messages about this lawsuit, requests to cover it, DMs, emails, Patreon messages, locals messages, Discord, even my Twitter, which most of you probably barely even know of since I got permabanned. You name it, I got it. People were reaching out on that platform. As a result, here I am covering it. However, I need to say this before we actually dive in. A lot of people may not like what I'm about to say. At first, I was kind of all in for this. The idea of YouTube being corrupt, a larger creator setting precedent by fighting back, and even the added drama of a conspiracy on top of it all. Yeah, color me interested. But the more I looked at things, the more I realized just how not that it really is. Ultimately, I find myself thinking that this is completely overblown, dramatized, and a likely, hopefully, forgettable instance of maybe borderline copyright infringement and nothing else. The most meaningful thing that we will certainly get from all this is whether or not parallax image animations of public domain photos are copyrighted works. Parallax animations, for those that don't know, can be made when you take a photograph, touch it up, strip it apart into layers, and then make those layers move a little bit, independent from each other. It's a way to give images depth of field, and every single graphic design or animation college major will learn this in, like, Intro to Animation 101. I say that because I learned it in a freshman college course. You can do some cool things with it, I guess, but we're not talking about rocket science with this. Anyway, the point here is not the technical details of the copyright case, or even the impact that this case might have, which is hopefully minimal under the best circumstances, and severely damaging for all of us actual creators under the worst outcome. We're not talking about a landmark issue to help creators on this, or something on the scale of H3H3 versus Matt Hosen's ID, or even Hughes versus Benjamin. These were YouTuber lawsuits where fair use precedent was established, and is now often referenced or referred to. Instead, the point is to discuss the absolutely absurd, nearly unhinged idea that YouTube's that YouTube is, quote, <laughs> I can't, YouTube's, quote, intentional efforts to undermine the United States of America in collusion with the Russian government, end quote. Time for context. All of this starts when RT Arabic, a substantial branch of Russia Today, which is affiliated with the Russian government, that is to say it is state-sponsored media, it all starts when RT Arabic uploaded a couple of videos with snippets of a parallax animation by Business Casual, another channel. That animation had been altered in a couple of ways, such as desaturating the color, removing a watermark or so they claim, adding music and a couple other visual effects, and it was also a very short amount of footage. That being said, it was custom animation footage that had been crafted by the Business Casual team, I hear them on this, and as a result they demanded that the videos be taken down. This part is probably the most clear cut. RT Arabic says, we didn't infringe on your copyright after the notices were filed. Business Casual says, yes you did, and they go to court. Okay, cool, who cares, not a soul. One very interesting thing though, just listen to this. After ripping our video from our channel, RT then used a digital eraser to scrape off our watermark, which they replaced with their own watermark, but they didn't stop there. Yeah, that's just flat out not true. The watermark they refer to is the standard YouTube insert that is a clickable overlay. It's there for any large channel you watch. I have it right now on the bottom corner of this video. You can see it right there. But if you download the video, it's gone. Business Casual very early on claims that they used a digital eraser to get rid of their watermark, replacing it with their own. But that is categorically untrue and started me off very early on with a severe amount of skepticism. The real interesting part comes when Business Casual decides that they're not just going to sue RT, actually they're suing TV Novosti, which is the company that runs the channel, they're going to sue YouTube as well. Here's the kicker. They are suing YouTube for a couple of reasons, but chief among them, they are suing YouTube for failing to terminate all of RT's different channels completely. This is where it devolves. I'm not going to make a two-hour video hashing through every single thing, deceptive thing that Business Casual says or ways that they get the law wrong in their own nearly two-hour long video because a good amount of it is actually legit. It passes the sniff test, some parts of it, and it indicates that YouTube needs to be way better at communication and enforcement. But as I explored the case, a few things became very clear. First, Business Casual spends a hefty amount of time attacking the new policy that RT is allowed to have over 30 copyright strikes in a year without being subjected to a complete purge from the platform. But this entire section is deceptive. RT itself has over 30 channels, which would mean that enforcement of a parent company operating 30 channels independently from one another, globally, based in separate countries, managed by different companies with different teams of people, such as TV Novosti, 
would mean that YouTube enforces a policy where a collective containing dozens of channels is only allowed a tiny fraction of one copyright strike per channel per set period, making it infinitely harder than it currently is for them to actually operate the business. One of your branches has one issue with copyright from one employee and posts three videos in, let's say, a short time frame with a few seconds of footage from someone else. Tough shit. Your entire network is permanently banned from the platform. Does this guy even hear himself? Next, I ran into the implicit argument that Business Casual makes where YouTube is undermining the United States of America in collusion with the Russian government for profit. He says that this is made possible because they have no competition, which is a bad thing. Them not having any competition is bad. I can agree on that. And that their reputation is worth far more than the money that RT generates or the business that they do in Russia. Further expanding with a specific mention that RT earns almost a million dollars a month from its 39 channels. But let's expand on that. Yeah, YouTube blocked the advertising of state-funded media from Russia months ago. In February of 2022, they struck down the monetization abilities of RT, meaning that YouTube does not earn money from that channel in an overt way. And RT is not earning a million dollars a month from their 39 channels. More deception. Now, one could argue that they still benefit as a result of traffic, but wait a second, because YouTube also suspended all monetization in Russia as a result of the war in Ukraine, and blocked RT channels specifically on a global scale for the exact same reason. How could it be that they're taking RT's side and working with the Kremlin to damage America if they're blocking all of the Russian state-sponsored media and globally and demonetizing it and all sorts of other things. Like, someone please explain that to me. I just have to say this. <sighs> Haven't we been fighting as creators for less copyright enforcement on YouTube for years? Haven't we been trying to avoid a plague of copyright trolls who are able to easily execute malicious copyright enforcement against individual creators? Now this guy says YouTube is supporting the Kremlin as it destroys America, and suddenly everyone is gung-ho to try and expand the severity of enforcement on copyright so that even multi-channel owners can be permabanned across all of their different channels for a few instances where they used tiny little snippets of a video after he deceived everyone by claiming that they used a digital eraser to remove a watermark that never existed? What the fuck? Business casual is just hardcore aiming at the court of public opinion here. Maybe he has a case on those three copyright strikes and maybe he should win in his argument against fair use because that is what he is arguing. He is arguing against fair use and would set precedent where a few seconds of background footage from three videos could be used to terminate every channel that a company owns or is associated with. But he crafted this entire video, almost two hours, with individual shots from multiple separate days. We can glean this, by the way, from looking at dates in various article publication timelines throughout the video and then comparing them to the date right now, while also, as per his own words at the end, rewriting it at least a hundred times. That's a two-hour nearly video with a script, and he re rewrote it a hundred times. All of this happened while his lawyers were requesting not one, not two, but three different extensions that they be granted two-week extensions for health reasons. June 3rd, plaintiff has suffered a flare-up of a chronic medical condition and needs two more weeks. June 21st, we hope this is the final two-week extension. Plaintiff got COVID and needs two more weeks. August 16th, plaintiff is in agonizing pain and cannot function. Two more weeks requested. But that very same day, and mind you, they're, they're saying that this is so severe that they simply cannot file documents. They can't write anything, like he can't function. Nothing can happen, right? Total shutdown. But the very same day, August 16th, is when Business Casual releases their two-hour video, scripted allegedly a hundred times from his own mouth, filmed and shot on numerous different days in multiple locations with skits and sketches and actors and whatever else, claiming that YouTube is subverting America in league with the Kremlin. Just set aside the fancy animations and the emotional rhetoric for a minute. Business Casual is arguing to undo all of the hard-fought advancements that were made with regards to copyright on YouTube because RT filed some false counter notifications. Russia itself responded to all this and basically said, if you take his side, we're going to block YouTube in the entire country. And he still wants the few seconds of those three videos to result in the deletion of 39 other channels. He is literally pushing for the exact opposite of what creators have been fighting for for years. He wants to make it harder to dispute copyright claims because he filed a copyright claim and a large corporation kind of screwed him a little bit. Okay, well, let's all be rational. What happens when you make it harder for creators or anyone on YouTube to fight copyright claims? Uh, let me see. 
Large corporations screw us. If business casual gets what he wants, it will be the literal antithesis of what individual creators on YouTube have been fighting, advocating, and pleading for. Now, yes, the case was struck down, and to be clear, it was the case against YouTube that got struck down. The case against RT is ongoing. But Business Casual is out here vowing to fight again, and it wasn't struck down with prejudice, so he very much could fight again. Remember when Jukin Media tried to screw MXR Plays? For those that don't remember, it was a bit of a moment online where a giant company tried to use copyright claims to mess with an individual channel. Yeah, this guy is trying to undo the beneficial system that YouTube now has for those defending against a claim, making it easier for a company like Jukin Media to claim content from channels like MXR and shut down any response they might have. Business Casual would rather the entire Russian population lose access to all of YouTube while advocating that the platform reverse all the creator-centered benefits on copyright that it has finally enacted over the past few years than simply target the main deserving party in court, Russia Today, and settle it that way. Section 230 should absolutely be looked at. YouTube does plenty of scummy shit on their platform. Shadow banning definitely is a thing in some capacity. And that's a big deal if it happened here, right? I, I feel for them. That's not okay if YouTube shadow banned their whole video on it. I guess, like, I'm not for that. RT may very well have screwed business casual on fair use. Seems to me like it meets probably three out of four pillars on fair use, but I'm not the judge, so whatever. It's not wrong to root for this guy on the premise of smaller company versus huge state-sponsored media outlet, but we all need to understand that what he advocates for fundamentally is fundamentally disruptive and harmful to average creators as a whole. It would be used a few times by an individual creator who gets their work stolen by a huge company, or it could be used constantly, all the time, by big companies claiming the footage that individual creators use. Think about this. How often has, have we, as a community, rallied behind a small creator who used a few seconds of footage and is now under copyright threat from a big evil corporation and they claim fair use? Now open your eyes, right? Because it's not a dream. That's precisely the opposite functionality here, as Business Casual whips up public support for making it possible to claim content with less oversight and a few seconds of work can be used to get dozens and dozens of channels banned. I have no love for Russia today. Let's just like kind of remove them from the equation. I don't care what happens to them, but take the name off, right? And just think about the functionality here. Think about the, the reality of what this man is pushing for. And hopefully all of us can realize that it's backwards. His video is heavily playing on emotion. It is deceptive. It misrepresents numerous different facts of the matter. And I really just kept thinking to myself the entire time watching, uh, that's not actually how any of that works. The incendiary take is that Business Casual should not sue YouTube on this topic, likely has no case, and should probably just drop it. Because this entire thing is monumentally deceptive, and would be ultimately harmful to the ecosystem if he succeeded. In prep for this video, I expressed heartfelt interest in understanding what was happening. I sent a couple of emails to his inbox, I commented on the video, hoping to be seen there, and I made it clear I've been critical of YouTube in the past, and understanding these issues is paramount, but I got no response. Anyone familiar with this channel knows that I am very, very critical of YouTube on a number of issues. I'm, I'll jump at the chance to criticize them, but this one just doesn't cut it. YouTube is not harming our democracy or subverting America in league with the Kremlin, whatever the fuck he said, because RT stole a few seconds of parallax animation. Maybe it's harming our democracy in a different way, aka censorship and selective visibility, but that's a completely different thing. Business Casual is out here tweeting at the CIA to investigate Google's Moscow headquarters as if they care about, like, the overblown, dramatized shit that he's saying. He's tweeting at the State Department to get involved, and he's trying to undermine the best working version of a copyright system that we have ever had on YouTube because he's pissed at a big company. I want to fight evil big tech firms as much as anyone else, okay? That much has always been true. You all know this. But this is just completely absurd and should not be taken seriously. That's it. I know some people will be disappointed by this take, or maybe enraged by this take, or very upset. How could I come out criticizing this? But, like, I mean, I don't want to use the word unhinged. Actually, no, I want to use the word unhinged. That video is either so severely sensationalized to a point where, like, it shouldn't be taken seriously, or it's unhinged and shouldn't be taken seriously. Whatever. Bad lawsuit, manipulative video on the part of Business Casual, harmful results should he succeed, and yet somehow everyone is starting to back him and root for him. Cut it out. Links down below to support, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.